Hi guys, I hope you're well. In this video I'm going to be talking about all the Women's Prize long-listed and short-listed books, going through all the ones I read, which ones I enjoyed, which one I think will win and which one I would like to win. And firstly I just want to say I know my background's a bit different to usual, I'm moving out of my flat and I don't have a single book with me or even a seat to sit on, so I'm on the floor just now, a very makeshift video today, but I really wanted to get this up because the, the winner is going to be announced on the 6th of June, which is a week today actually as I'm filming this. I've managed to read 13 out of the 16 long-listed books, so I know this isn't going to be completely comprehensive because I've not managed to read all of them, but overall I'm pretty proud of having read so many. And briefly to start, I'll mention the three that I've not read. Firstly is The Ministry of Utmost Happiness by Arundhati Roy, um, which I, which was long-listed I think for the Man Booker Prize last year and I was not particularly interested in it, in it then and I'm still not really now. I might pick it up at some point, but I think I will read The God of Small Things, her previous novel, first. I've not read Miss Burma, mostly because my local library doesn't stock it and I've heard kind of mixed reviews about it and I've also not read Happy, also because my library doesn't stock it, although I am quite excited to read that one but I've been trying to rein back the book spending recently so I've not got into buying it quite yet. I've made full video reviews for five of the books that I've read so as I go through them I will link them above and in the description um, but I'm going to talk about firstly the books that were long-listed and then the six that were shortlisted. I did largely enjoy the shortlisted books more, so if some of my reviews near the start of this video are slightly more negative then I do promise they get more positive as we go along. Firstly, Elm by Fiona Mosley. Now this one was shortlisted for the Man Booker Prize last year and it was a bit of an underdog. It's a debut novel by a bookseller and uh, really one that wasn't on the radar too much until it was shortlisted, so I was pleased to see it on the list for the Women's Prize. I did make a review for this book when I read it a while back, so I'll link that as usual. Um, and this is quite an odd book, it's uh, really an analysis of society based in rural Yorkshire and it follows a family, um, a, a father that's just known as Daddy in the book and his two children who live really on the outskirts of society in a house that he's built with his own hands. He's a bare knuckle boxer and this controlled violence in his work life really contrasts with his care and tenderness for his children. This was a really good book, I really enjoyed the exploration of fatherhood that we see here um, which I haven't seen in that many other novels to the extent that it is here and I also liked how regional it was. It was very Yorkshire, both in the dialects of the characters and also just in the attitudes as well. Um, I, I really enjoyed this book, although I don't think I would have shortlisted it for the Man Booker Prize last year and I probably wouldn't have put it on the shortlist for this prize. I just don't think it's quite strong enough um, to be in the running. Next is Three Things About Elsie by Joanna Cannon, which is so different in tone to Elmet, and I think it really is testament to how varied this long list was. Um, this is a book that had, I think, a really interesting premise, but ultimately I was quite disappointed by it. It follows an elderly woman in a sort of secure accommodation for older people, and she's fallen and she's waiting for someone to come and help her. During her time on the floor, she's recounting her life, and in particular remembering a uh, man who disappeared from her life some 50 years previously but seems to have reappeared recently. This book's really about memory and I think it's so easy for books that are exploring this topic to become very nostalgic and sentimental, which I really don't like in a novel and I think this one did unfortunately fall into this trap. It's about how very small acts can have long-lasting impacts, which is a fair theme to explore in a novel and it can be done very interestingly, I have seen it done really well but in this case I felt like it was just too saccharine. There were some instances of really nice writing in this book and also some very incisive humour which I appreciated, but overall I didn't find it too memorable and it was also, to me, a lot longer than it needed to be. Next it's worth talking about another one in this long list that's about memory and it's The Trip to Time by Kit DeWall. And this one I found slightly frustrating as well because I enjoyed almost every aspect of it apart from the ending which I really disliked. It's about an Irish woman who is just turning 60, I think, and she's looking back at her life, especially the time where she first married her husband, who we discover has is, is no longer part of her life. And it's really about exploring how this came to happen and exactly what's happened. And I don't want to say a lot about the details of the plot because it, it was really nice to discover things as I read it, um, but I will say that what she does now, kind of for a living, is help people overcome the traumas that she experienced earlier, earlier in her life. And I think the way it was done was really excellent. It was very subtle, it didn't have any of the sentimentality of three things about Elsie, and I felt like the way it portrayed memory and life in general was very realistic. But as I said, it, there was a decision right at the end, 
which I just could not get on board with. I really don't understand why they chose to take the plot in the direction they did. And to me it felt totally at odds with the whole tone of the rest of the book. And so when I finished it, I it was quite soured for me uh, for quite a long time. Although now looking back on it, I can kind of try and pretend that part didn't happen. And I overall, I think it was a really excellent book. Looking back on it, I think I would even put it on the shortlist because of how beautifully it did deal with some of the themes. See What I Have Done by Sarah Schmidt is probably the only book in this long list that you could classify as a crime novel, maybe except Manhattan Beach, but that was more of a gangster book. This book is about a real-life murder case from the US dating from 1892, where Lizzie Borden was accused of murdering her father and stepmother in a really vicious way with a hatchet. She was acquitted by the jury who couldn't fathom how a woman would or would even want to commit such a horrendous crime. And this case has had lasting interest, especially in the US, I think. And I have to admit, not really knowing anything about it or having a great deal of interest in true crime, I feel like one of the only people who isn't that interested in true crime. And I think it would have helped to have some background knowledge about the case in particular. I like the structure of this book, which alternated perspectives between Lizzie and also several other characters in her family and the surrounding community. And I was quite hoping this book would be like Alias Grace by Margaret Atwood, which I think is really an exploration of female guilt and um, how women murderers are treated differently in the justice system and by society. But I felt like this book was actually a bit lacking. It wasn't a quest to discover truth, and I think that's absolutely fine. It was more of a study into um, how subjective truth can be and how the same events can be perceived very differently by different people. And that I find very interesting, probably more interesting than straight up crime novels. But the way it was handled, I kind of felt like at the end I didn't really gain anything. Having said that, it was very readable and I raced through it because I did want to find out what happened even though I, I knew that there wasn't really going to be a definitive answer at the end of it, that wasn't the purpose. But to me it was a slightly forgettable book. Next, Manhattan Beach by Jennifer Egan is also set in the US and involves crime in some sense but is wider than I think most of the books in this long list because although it does focus around one family, it's also talking about the wider politics of a whole city and its criminal underworld. It made quite a nice change to read something that was slightly more expansive in scope because some of the books in this long list especially are quite insular. Um, so in brief, the plot follows a family uh, during the Great Depression where the father has turned to shady business to make money and he has two daughters, uh, one whose perspective we see from quite a lot and another who is severely disabled. It skips forward a few years when his eldest daughter is 19 and we discover that he has suddenly left several years before. And I suppose the trajectory of the book is really about her trying to figure out what happened, why he left, if he's still alive, while also trying to forge a life for herself as a female diver in the Navy. These sections are set during the Second World War, so there's also those kind of global politics coming into the plot as well there. I think the sections that I enjoyed most in this book were the ones about Lydia, the severely disabled sister. I think they were dealt with really sensitively. And there were also passages that were narrated by uh, like a, a millionaire club-owning mobster, um, <laughs> who's not a character I would generally identify with, but I felt like he was really humanised in those passages. I think the problem with uh, books that are told from multiple perspectives is that it's really tricky to make them all equally engaging and unfortunately there was one character in this book whose sections I just found quite dull so I felt myself kind of racing through them and for that reason the pacing felt a little bit uneven through this book to me just because I didn't enjoy those parts so much. Overall I did find this a really enjoyable read um, and I, I did race through it, it is quite plot based and I did want to find out what was going to happen. Um, I might even have put this on the shortlist if I was choosing um, because I found it really compelling and just well written too. It's the kind of book that I would probably never have chosen off my own back. Um, it was only really because it was on this long list that I decided to pick it up. And um, there were quite a few books like that and I'm glad of this long list because it did give me the opportunity to try books that I might not have chosen myself otherwise. 
Eleanor Oliphant is completely fine by Gail Honeyman is actually the first book that I read from this long list and it's the one that I enjoyed least. Uh, I made a whole separate review talking about it so I'm really not going to say much about it here but the basic premise is that it's following a 30-ish year old woman who is really isolated from society. She struggles with daily interactions with other people and she's dependent on alcohol and the the structure of the plot kind of follows her trying to integrate into normal society again. I didn't think it was badly written, I do think there were some elements of really smart humour, although I did have a problem with the humour being at, it, at the expense of the protagonist. I didn't really like how her mental health was portrayed and I just felt like it was so predictable. It has been a wildly successful book and I know loads of people have loved it, but unfortunately it just wasn't for me. A Boy in Winter by Rachel Seifer is another one that left me feeling a bit cold, which I was surprised about considering how emotional the subject matter is. It's set in Ukraine in 1941, uh, when the German forces are coming to occupy the towns. It's told from the perspective of a few different characters, and this was an element that I quite enjoyed. There was one character in particular who was a German engineer who was obliged to join the Nazi party, kind of against his will, and he feels very uneasy about the work he's being asked to do, and uh, he feels like the Ukrainian workers who are making the roads that he has been designing are being unfairly treated, but he doesn't really know how to speak out in their favour. I really enjoyed seeing his inner conflict, but I felt like his story didn't really go anywhere, and that's how I feel about the book overall. It was short, only about 250 pages, and when I reached the end I felt like I should only maybe be halfway through. So little happened in the book. I feel like it was intended more as a snapshot into the lives of these individual people in the book, but the way it was written I felt like it was just so clinical and detached that I couldn't have any sort of meaningful relation with any of them. Overall, lots of awful things happened in this book, but they were all very unaffecting because of how they were written, which I'm sure wasn't the intention, and I feel like maybe I've misunderstood some really crucial element of it, but overall I feel like I just got nothing from it, unfortunately. So um, yeah, that, those were all the books that were on the long list, and now I'm going to talk about the six books that were shortlisted. The Idiot by Elif Batchman is one of the slightly stranger novels, I think, um, out of all of these, and I think it's much less plot-based than the other ones that were on the long list. It follows a first-year undergraduate student at a university in the United States, uh, and how she is very interested in linguistics and language, uh, and she forms a sort of online written communication and relationship with someone who's in one of her classes. I really loved the first 100 pages or so, I felt like it was very witty, it had lots of great observational humour about the sort of absurdities of everyday life, and I really enjoyed the passages where she is writing to this classmate and how relationships are, can be formed, especially in the digital age, uh, through these online communications rather than orally. This is clearly something that's much more common nowadays, that we can have friendships with people online who we've not necessarily ever met in person and we can choose to project a certain image of ourselves through text that we can't really do face to face. I like the way the book dealt with this and the confidence she had in her intellectual writing but her unease about actually meeting this young man face to face. The book did for me become a lot less enjoyable as it progressed, mostly because there was a change in scenery. The main character goes travelling during her summer holidays um, and I felt like what, what used to be very relatable in the first hundred pages, or even half the book, became so much less so as they were stretched to the very limits of uh, what humans actually do. And I felt myself so often thinking, people don't actually speak like this. Uh, even really pretentious students don't have these very forced conversations. If only there had been an honest conversation between these two characters, so much of the misunderstandings and um, unease that she felt about his feelings towards her could have been resolved um, and this just didn't happen. I did feel like her agonising about his feelings for her were just too exaggerated to be realistic and perhaps that was the point but it was definitely an issue that I had when I was reading this is that I, I just felt like I was missing the point at a lot of a lot of stages and it just made me feel a bit stupid like I was not understanding what was being conveyed. I really enjoyed the musings on language and linguistics and the observations of tiny everyday occurrences 
um, that were really smart but they weren't pretentious but I felt like it did become too over involved in itself as it progressed. I feel like objectively this is probably a great book but it became so weighed down by its own intelligence that for me anyway it just sucked all the joy out of actually reading it. The Mermaid and Mrs Hancock by Imogen Hermes Gower is a book that I've made a separate video about as well so again I won't say much here but in brief it's about a man uh, in Georgian London who has acquired what appears to be a mummified uh, mermaid and he decides to put it on display and in so doing he meets a woman who challenges his viewpoint on a lot of things. It's about spectacle and spectatorship and um, the, the female body and seduction and uh, female autonomy and I really love the book. It's gorgeously written as well, the descriptions are so delectable and it doesn't gloss over really important subjects. I feel like it does have something important to say. Sing Unburied Sing by Jessamyn Ward is one of the hardest books to read I think on this long list just in terms of the really dark subject matter um, but I can really see why it's resonated with so many readers. It's about a family set in the US, um, the mother is black, the father is white and in prison and they have two children and it's kind of a road trip book where the mum, uh, her friend and their two children are going to collect the dad from prison. We discover that the mother is lacking in many ways, she is neglectful towards her children, uh, she's quite abusive and she also is a drug addict. The book is from multiple perspectives including both parents and the eldest child Jojo who's still only 12 or 13 and um, I think this book is very relevant in 2018 because it's about racial profiling. There is a section where they're pulled over by the police and because there are black people in the car things don't go as smoothly as they ought to and it also is more widely about the history of racial oppression in the US um, going back through a couple of generations through the stories that uh, the grandparents of uh, this character Jojo tells. I feel like I enjoyed this book less than I ought to because I was just slightly distracted while I was reading it, I don't feel like I gave it my full attention. Um, but there was a slightly supernatural aspect of this book that I don't want to talk about much because I don't want to spoil it but I was a bit unconvinced about that um, and I think although it, this is a really important topic to be discussed in books. I have read quite a few recently that do discuss similar themes and I'm not sure exactly what this added to the conversation that was new. I think it was however a really heartbreaking analysis of grief um, and I think books of this topic are clearly really important and I do think they have the power to change uh, how we view race uh, and certainly racism I think particularly in the US. Um, so I do think it has a worthy place on this shortlist. When I Hit You by Mina Kandasamy is a novel but in many ways it's quite autobiographical of the author's life um, as it's about domestic violence in India. It follows a young woman who chooses to marry an uh, academic and he has very strong political views and he constantly finds ways to criticise his wife and these criticisms turn into quite controlling and coercive behaviour where he curtails her freedoms like her ability to use the internet or her um, opportunities to write or see her friends uh, and then as the novel progresses this develops also into physical and sexual violence. Unsurprisingly this is a difficult read and it really does not shy away from exploring any of the topics in excruciating depth and detail it shows how domestic violence can happen to educated women. It's not just something that occurs to the powerless or the weak or the stupid, um, but this kind of coercive and manipulative behaviour uh, can happen to any woman or, or indeed any man. Uh, and of course leaving a marriage like this uh, is not so easy always as just packing a bag and leaving. This woman's ability to write is one of her biggest solaces so when her husband takes this from her um, unsurprisingly she feels really bereft and some of the passages that I enjoyed most in this book were, were where her husband was at work and she would type out really offensive or slanderous or sexual material on her laptop and delete it all before he returned to kind of exert some sort of control over her life where she could. Particularly upsetting in this book was how little support she got from her family who largely knew what was going on but 
um, it was very normalised and they just kind of told her to deal with it. And I was reading that 37% of married Indian women uh, deal with domestic violence at home. So clearly this is a very uh, prevalent issue in India particularly, uh, but it's not one that I've really read about much in novels. This is a really nuanced book, it's one where you know exactly what's going to happen from the very beginning, but it's the way that it unfolds that is the beauty of it. Sight by Jesse Greengrass is also one that I've reviewed separately, and to me it's the most unique that's on either the long list or the short list. It um, doesn't have a lot of plot, but it's a really a, an extended musing into the conditions of motherhood and of pregnancy and the really fraught decision that the protagonist woman is making about whether or not she wants to become a mother. It's about your child being at once you and separate from you and the almost grief that a mother experiences as their child becomes independent from them. It's a very internal novel, the whole thing really happens within this woman's mind and although some plot does happen around her it's all a kind of conduit to her emotions. I was very impressed by this book and it's definitely one of my favourites. Um, although I don't think the Women's Prize judges will choose it as their winner because I think they'll choose a more accessible one. Um, although it may potentially be a winner for me. I do have to say though that it's very intellectual and I think it does border the pretensions at some stages and I can really understand why people would dislike it a lot because of the writing style. So it's a book that's not for everyone, but if you're interested in quite offbeat writing or if you're up for a book that's quite challenging intellectually then I would give this one a shot. Home Fire by Camilla Shamsi is the book that I've reviewed most recently so I will really just mention it briefly but it's really about how terrorism is treated culturally in the UK, um, how the government treats both terrorists and their families and also how we perceive Islam in the UK. I think this is a really important book just now especially and the issue of terrorism I think it's tricky to, to deal with in a novel because it's so complex and it's quite controversial but this book does a really good job of not oversimplifying it but still making it accessible to the average reader. It also just has a very compelling plot and it is nicely written, it's, it's easy to read but it makes you think. And to me it seems like a, a really good all-round package if I'm thinking in terms of judging and I, I would say that this would be the choice that I think the judges will go for in choosing their winner and I definitely wouldn't be upset with that. I thought it was definitely one of the best books on the whole long list. If I was to choose the short list I would choose Sight, Home Fire, The Mermaid and Mrs Hancock, uh, When I Hit You and I think I would add to that The Trick to Time and maybe Manhattan Beach although I do think that Sing and Buried Sing does have a, a valuable place in the short list. If you've read some of the books that are on the long list or short list then let me know which ones you, you really like, which ones you think will win um, or which ones you'd like to win because I know that they're not always the same thing. Uh, I, hope, I hope you enjoyed this video and I hope that if you're sick of seeing Women's Prize videos you'll be glad that they're not going to be any more until next year um, and I'll see you in a video very soon. Bye bye!